Life in Christ is good. Christ loves you all. You are Creation 13. I'm Ambassador Adam Starcy. Um, and today I want to talk to you about um, the 13. I've talked to you about 13 before in previous videos. Um, but I want you, I want you to become aware that you know the 13. I've spoke about 13 before. You know, 13 is what I use it for. Is is 13 is creation. Um, creation of life. Uh, thirteen is also M, which is mother. Um, symbolism of the mother, uh, mother of creation, universal, universal creator, so on and so forth. You know, thirteen is creation, and it can be creation that um, continues to flower and blossom into beauty, or it can be um, thirteen can be destruction and death okay and that's why there's two thirteens there's creation and there's destruction and these are both um I'm probably gonna get blasted for this but these are both spells okay um everything is energy everything is synergy everything is magic of creation okay M magic M13 magic M13 that's that's what it is um so I was in a I was in a one of the groups that I'm attached to um, on the internet and uh, I I read someone's thing saying that uh, someone wrote and said uh, that if you look at 13 in the mirror right it's 31 but it's also um, e L for L, okay, and L is a God, Elohim, um, L, uh, also L is attached to Bell, and I found that quite interesting. So I decided to do some research on it because I was like, holy cow! So if if L is thirteen, you know, that also, you know, makes it more aware of what I was talking about in the previous videos, because I I talk about things. Or concepts um, and the answers continue to come to me um, more and more you know I talk about the positive aspect but as a whole it creates something more um, so I've talked about the positive creation of 13 um, you know the the creation of 13 you know the beauty of 13 but there's also a negative side of 13, which is the destruction side. And I've talked about it briefly, but I never really clicked until now. So, you know, this is this is what the power of the elite, um, the um, descendants of Abraham. Um, because I also read it. I'm going to read this article here in a second. Um, but Abraham, Abraham's God was El, Elohim, El. Um, and if you do research on L, it is the Bell God. And what is the Bell God? It is the Bethamon God. Um, it is the God, the Goat God, the Bull God, um, that the Illuminati, the Freemasons, um, even the higher secret society worship. They worship L because L is uh, Yahweh. Um, is uh, uh, the God of this world, you know, the God that controls this earth um, that traps you here, you know, it says in the Bible, you know, um, Satan will rule this world for a thousand years in life. And like I said in the previous video, you know, one day is a thousand years in the Bible. So what is a thousand years in the Bible? You know, it's something to think about. Um, so anyways, I'll go ahead and read this because I found it very fascinating. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to kind of skim through because you can look about. I mean, Wikipedia has everything. Um, now, like I said, there is half truths in everything you read, but it gives you enough to do research on. So if you look up L E L, um, 
and going to Wikipedia under the L deity, um, it, it pops you up a whole bunch of interesting stuff. Um, so basically, the Egyptian god, um, I think we're looking at the Egyptian perspective. Uh, they have this uh, passage translated, um, and it says, an internal bound has been established for us, which is humanity. Um, Ashar has established it for us. And I find it that it is an abbreviation um, because it can also be related to Satan. Um, Ashar has established it for us and all the divine beings. Um, and the majority of the groups of all the holy ones through the bound of heaven and earth forever. Now heaven translates into sky. So you, so the souls that come down to earth are bound with the sky and the earth forever. Um, and it's very interesting that it says that because that, that means that the soul is trapped here. Does that mean forever? I don't think so. Um, but it's definitely very interesting. And it says all divine beings. Uh, and you know, if you look at the story of the fallen angels, you know, the fallen angels fell to the earth because they were attempted by the earth and its and its uh, entrapment. You know, basically the spell of the earth. I I don't I you know I, I find it fascinating on how the earth is transforming itself into a prison planet or into a planet. Um, that it, that is imprisoned, um, and the only thing I can come up with is, like I said, you know, um, Satan or Lucifer. That's in the human Bible, whatever. Um, those Guardians of the Galaxy group got kicked out, and then they were imprisoned on Earth. So basically, Earth um, became a prison planet to entrap Satan here um, and somehow or rather it became his playground its playground um, and that's a whole different story altogether but I found it very interesting that that was in there um, let's see what else we got in some inscriptions the name El El Kun or meaning El creator of earth so again it says El is the creator of earth appears even included in late inscriptions of so and so, um, because it just talks about in all these old texts. You know, it talks about L and uh, talks about L the covenant, and also talks about L the judge. Um, and this is also where it starts talking about the the finna. And I don't know how to pronounce that. The finna. P H O E N I C I A N, whatever that is, I'm sure you know what it is. God Bell is generally identified either with the Northwest Semitic God El or with the God um, Dagon. And I'll look up Dagon later. Um, but then we got the Emirates inscription, and, and um, it refers to um, numerous gods. Um, and it can be God of the Father, so on and so forth, family gods. Uh, for the Canaanites, uh, in the ancient L Levantine region as a whole, L or um, two Ls, was a supreme God, the father of mankind and all creatures. He also fathered many gods, most importantly, Hidad, Yam, and Mat. And, you know, it's also very fascinating how they speak about these gods um, because they are more than likely the fallen angels. You know, all these gods, you know, if you put these, if you put things together with all these gods, like it says here, um, El was a father to the many gods here, Adad, Yam, Mat. Also says the Roman god Zeus, Poseidon, Hades. You know, these names are the fallen angels. You know, these fallen angels ruled over humanity. Um, they did. And that's basically, if you read all these gods, that's what it is. They are fallen angels. So these fallen angels, their names are 
are in the Texas, you know, and why humanity has not figured that out yet, I don't know. But any perceived god around the world is a fallen angel. So you got all their names there. So it's not just the fallen angels from uh, um, uh, the book of Enoch, you know, you got to expand it even more. So you, not only do you got the names of the fallen angels from the book of Enoch, but you also got the names of many other um, fallen angels that have came here too. So, um, as recorded on the clay tablets of Agarot, El is the husband of the goddess Ashara. Um, and so on and so forth. Because it also talks about, you know, a, a family as well, which is also of the fallen angels. Um, El is called again and again uh, Torah El, which means bull El or the bull god. Which again, that that signifies that El is uh, Bethamot, the goat god, um, the bull god, you know, the bull in the Bible. Um, you know, it it's right there in the um, Canaanites text. Is you know that L is the devil, is Satan. Uh, he is the creator of creatures again um, created life here um, which is interesting too because you know if you read up on the fallen angels they mess with genetic coding um, they played around with genetics and stuff so he so the fallen angels created all the creatures of the world in some way shape or form um, Father of the gods, Father of man, Creator eternal. Um, you know, the thing, cool thing about Wikipedia is it gives you all the actual um, translations. Um, oh, oh, Lamb appearing in Hebrew form, um, and you know, Elohim in Hebrew is still El as well, which is still the bull god. Um, and it says in Genesis 21, 33, he is your pat patriarch. Um, Heda Kuka is translated in the patriarch. Um, El is the gray bearded ancient one, full of wisdom, uh, a king, father of years, El the warrior. He's also named Etpun of unknown meaning variously rendered as Latpon, whatever. Um, El and Hadad are symbolized by the bull. They both wear bull horns, bull horns on their headdresses. So, <laughs> see, so it even shows in there, you know, that in Hebrew, which is the, the Bible, um, El is also worshipped, and El is also the bull god. Um, which contradicts everything that the Bible says. Um, again, you got to do your research. And why people don't, I don't know. In Canaanite mythology, El builds a desert sanctuary with his children and two wives, leading to speculation that at one point El was a desert god. Um, and this goes into um, hidden symbolisms um, about that. So you can read up on that if you need to. Um, another interesting thing in here it says in Agaratak the bell cycle L is introduced dwelling in on or in Mount L um, and L is possibly meaning night um, and this also falls into the um, into the the worshipping of the moon the um Using the moon for um, for sacrifices, for um, for magic, for spells, so and so forth. You know the moon magic. You know, like I said, you know, people use the sun as a uh, source of magic. People use the moon as a source of magic. And you know, when I talk about the sun and the moon, people seem to view it as that. Um, but I view it as it's just a cycle, 
you know if you decide to use energy that's up to you but you're basically if you if you do the sacrifices and rituals of the moon or of the sun but basically the moon then you are giving your energy away to El the bell god to Satan and so on and so forth and also an interesting thing that popped up in the Bible because I was planning to read it in the Bible in one of these videos is about that um, let's see what we got here yeah it says right here uh, in Matthew chapter 5 verse 21 maybe I don't know but it's entitled murder if you have heard that it was said to the people long ago do not murder and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment and like I said it murder is with everything every living being on this planet it doesn't matter what it is um, if you kill something it's murder and that's what it is um, and you know it's 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 the blood sacrifices you know like that it's uh, like cows um, cats and dogs you know that kind the mammals basically the mammals we're mammals they're mammals it's the mammal aspect do not kill any mammals okay um, as a whole I don't think you should kill anything right unless if it's um, unless if it's a threat to you but I'm sure there's some alternate way to to um, get around it but anyways nevertheless you should not kill just because um, because murder is murder and that's it um, do not murder and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment but I tell you that anyone who is angry with his brother will be subject to judgment again anyone who says to his brother is answer is unanswerable to the blah blah but anyone who says you fool you'll be in danger of the fire of hell therefore if you're offering your gift at the altar and see it, therefore it's talking about altars um, rituals you know they talk about rituals in the Bible um, and whether you read the new chapter the New Testament or the Old Testament they still do sacrifices they do sacrifices to to the moon god to El they're doing sacrifices to El to Satan um, proven fact you can bash me all you want do your research and you'll find out why um, because you're not supposed to have an altar you're not supposed to have any form of of idol worshiping you know God is unseen universal God is unseen you do not need to physically see something um, to understand it again you gotta do your research uh, therefore if you're offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you leave your gift there in front of the altar <laughs> first go and be recounseled to your brother then come and offer your gift making an exchange basically you're exchanging energy uh, or giving a piece of your soul jeez um, settle matters quickly with your advisory who is talking who is taking you to court do it while you are still with him on the way or I may hand you or he may hand you over to the judge and the judge may hand you over to the officer and you may be thrown into prison I tell you the truth and you will not get out until you have paid the last penny um, it kind of contradicts itself there, but anyways nevertheless you should not kill but it talks about altars it talks about sacrificing rituals so on and so forth and magic it talks about magic right there um, again I don't know why people don't see that uh, but just depends on the reader I guess so um, like I said I had to do with the whole night concept um, let's see
So in the Hebrew Bible, the Hebrew form appears in Latin. And it's always interesting how some of the words in Hebrew also appear in Latin. Um, but standard Hebrew transcription as L and in Tiberian Hebrew translates into L. L is a generic word for God that could be used for any God including Hadad, Malak, or Yahweh. Again, that's where L is is the same. L is L. Um, they say or Yahweh, it's still L. And uh, Tanakh, uh, Elohim is the normal word for a God or the great God. Or gods, given that the I am suffix makes a word plural in the Hebrew. Um, but the form L also appears mostly in poetic passages, um, so on and so forth. Um, the, the theological position of the Tanakh, I could be saying it wrong, is that the names of El and Elohim, when used in singular, not plural, but in singular, to mean the Supreme God, refers to Yahweh. Um, again, Yahweh is Satan. Uh, beside whom other gods are supposed to be either non-existent or insignificant or in yeah insufficient non-existent or insufficient whether this was a long-standing belief of a relatively new one has long been the subject of inconclusive uh, debate about the prehistory of the sources of the Tanakh and about the prehistoric of the Israelite religion in the peace strand of Yahweh. Um, it also says it in Exodus, I guess. So you can look up Exodus chapter 6, verses 2 and 3, I guess. Uh, oh, it says it right here. I revealed myself to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as El uh, Shaddai, but was not known by them by the name Yahweh. And this is where um, Abraham comes into play. Uh, before El's revelation with the name of Yahweh, so basically um, El revealed himself to be Yahweh. It is said in Genesis chapter 14, uh, 18, or verse 18 through 20, I guess, that Abraham accepted the blessings of El. Okay, so Abraham accepted um, the curses of El because I talked about blessings too in a previous video. That blessings is a curse because you got B in there you cut that B in half it's 13 so it's a spell so it's the best blessings of L when Melka I don't know what are the names the king of Salam and high priest of its deity L L Hein blessed him one scholarly position is that the identification of Yahweh with El is, le is late. That Yahweh was earlier thought of as only one of many gods and not normally identified with El. Another is that in much of the Hebrew Bible, the name El is an al alternate name for Yahweh. But in the Elohist and the priestly traditions, it is conceived as an earlier name than Yahweh. The name Yahweh is used in the Bible Tanakh in the first book of Genesis and says that at that time people began to call upon the name of the Lord and Lord translates into authority um, and authority can mean more than just one uh, so every time you read the Lord just turn it to authority you're going to read the Bible whole in a whole different way in some places, especially in Psalm, Yahweh is clearly envisioned as a storm god, something not true of El, so far as we know. Although true of his son, Bel. <laughs> so see, so, so in this part, it says that El uh, has a son named Bel. Um, and like I said, El and Bel are both the bull gods, the gold gods, Bethlehem, Satan. It is Yahweh who is prophesied to one day battle the Leviathans, the serpent, and slay the dragon. Um, the Leviathans, I'm going to have to look up, do some research on. 
Um, uh, the slaying of the serpent in myth is indeed attributed to both Baal and um, a knot in the uh, Ugaratic text, but not to El. Such mythological motive, motives are variously seen as late survivors from a period when Yahweh held a place in theology compared to that of Hadad at Agarot, or as late, uh, I can't pronounce that, application of Yahweh of deeds more commonly attributed to Hadad, blah, blah, blah. Uh, according to Ox Oxford Companion, the word mythology, it seems almost certain that the gods of the that the god of the Jews evolved gradually from the Canaanite El El E L who was in all likelihood the god of Abraham. If El was a high god of Abraham, Elohim the prototype <laughs> so Elohim the prototype of, of Yahweh, Yahweh or Jehovah in English but Yahweh uh, and their Ar archaeological indications that she was perceived as such before she was blah blah blah. Um, but anyway, so yeah, so it talks more about if El was a high god of Abraham, Elohim, the prototype of Yahweh. Because again, Jehovah, uh, Jehovah, again, refers to Satan. So it's just, it's it's all in there. All El is, is just... It is the God of the earth. And the God of the earth is Satan, the fallen angels. Um, the father of the fallen angels. <laughs> and it's it, it astonishes me. Um, it really does. And this is where... Um, see, what do we got here? I think that was pretty much it. I could keep reading on and on. But you can look up L, E, L, and you can read up on all this stuff. And it just goes on and on. But yeah, it's it's very, very interesting. Uh, you know, it's it's right there. And so, well, it's really got long. But yeah, so anyways, so with that being said, um, I wrote on there, on that uh, site I was at, or the uh, group board, I wrote on that, what does 13 mean to you? And, you know, a lot of people may just say the word just to say it, but do they know what they're saying? Because 13 love um, has a lot of power to it. Um, and I, I think probably mainly has to do with the energy and the tone of it. Um, but as a whole, you know, you have to become aware of what you're putting energy out. I mean, you can't just be saying words just because it's just some trend or fade, you know, oh, 13 love, you know, and you say, you got to have the meaning to it. You know, I already told you guys about, you know, my, what I use 13 for, what I use 13 love for, you know, it's creation to create, um, to honor the mother aspect, uh, universal womb. Uh, you know the universal God that created everything you know the universal God wants you to continue to create they don't want you to destroy however you also got 13 in reverse which is L E L which is also Bell Satan is all about destruction and that's what you read in the Bible you know this is their fascination with destruction of the world that's why I talked about September in the previous video you know, I'm talking about it the past couple of years. You know, was that they build up the energy from March to September to try to create that destruction. So then it can feed to their god, El, Bel, Bethamon, Satan. El is Yahweh, which is the god in the Hebrew Bible, which is the god of the earth because Satan El Bell is the ruler of this earth um, and you put all these puzzles together you'll see 
that that's what it is. But again, humanity is stubborn, selfish, stuck in traditions and their old ways. They're not going to see this. Um, so you got us messengers um, letting you guys know, you know, what's going on. Uh, and you know, all this, all this stuff is is out there. It is. And like I said, everything is half truce. But you got to just continue to discover and explore on more and more and more. So um, 13 is a spell. It can be used in both positive and negative creation or destruction. Um, use it wisely. Use 13 wisely. Um, and you know, again, like I said, you know, become aware that everything is energy. Everything is synergy. Um, so yeah, so that's pretty much all I gotta say about that. So yeah, so just be very cautious about what you're putting your energy to, what God you're putting your energy to. Like I said, you gotta be very specific. You can't just say, "Oh, I love God." You gotta be very specific. You know, I say the universal God of creation, the one that loves to create life, create life throughout the universe, not just Earth, but through the universe. You know, I'm very specific, you know, 13 love to the universal God of creation who loves to create life. You know, 13 love to the mothers who give birth to children, who give birth to the star seeds to continue to create and teach humanity, 13. Um, you know, you have to be very specific. You know, when I say 13, that is, that is a spell. It is. And like I said, you know, Everything is a spell. In the Bible, it talks about altars um, and idols. <laughs> Those are spells themselves. And you're not supposed to be worshiping any idols. You're not supposed to be doing any altars. You know, it's just it's it's just counterdicts itself. It really does. So, anyways, um, hope this video helps you. If you got any questions, let me know. I know this this is kind of out there for most people you know you just have to do your research on it so um yeah so if you have a question let me know um and yeah so love you all love yourself keep shining bright talk to you a little bit